show you some more production techniques that I've used here in Cosmonaut. Let's just cycle over these four bars here for now. So here we've got the bass line coming from a massive and getting the balance right between the bass and the kick drum in your track can be quite tricky sometimes since they are sharing the same frequencies. But one way of getting around this, as you can see here, is actually leaving a gap in the bass line on every beat of the bar to make room for the kick drum. And since we have this sine wave layer here underneath the kick drum, this kick practically forms part of the bass line. So on every beat the sine wave takes over and therefore it's okay to leave a gap in this faster 16th bass. You find that in a lot of electro house tracks for example they have a tonal kick drum like this. The kick drum practically is the bass line of the track and there's no additional bass line going on at all. But for this sort of track here it needed that extra faster 16th bass line to give it that extra drive. And there are a couple more plugins here on the channel. So we've got an EQ8, as always rolling off the very lowest frequencies below 30 Hz. And to make this bass sound a bit warmer, I'm boosting the frequencies around 200 Hz in this example. So this would be without. And the extra boost gives this bass a bit more body. Same goes here for this saturator plugin, which also adds a nice sort of tape saturation kind of warmth uh, to the sound. Now there's a second layer here playing on top of the bass, also coming from a massive. And very often it's a good idea to layer sounds to add a bit more texture. And as you know in Ableton that's super easy, you just right click on the channel and choose duplicate copies the synth and all the plugins and the automation as well. And then the second sound is actually a really thin plucky sound, which also pans from left to right, just to make this bass a bit more stereo and also to add a bit more white noise when the filter opens here like this. And then we have a compressor here with sidechain compression and uh, I'll show you how I set up sidechain compression in my tracks. You shouldn't actually use the kick drum of your track as the sidechain trigger input. It's always much better to set up uh, basically a silent sidechain signal that runs through the entire track for a couple of reasons actually. So, uh, for example, here in the drop section where there is no kick drum, you can still have sidechain compression on pads, for example, uh, and riffs. And this is the actual sound that I'm using. And as you can hear, that's basically just a really short click. And uh, that's a really important tip. Always use a really short sound as the sidechain trigger signal because then you are much more flexible when it comes to controlling the rhythm of your sidechain effect. I'll show you that here on the pad. Let's cycle over that. It also has a compressor with sidechain and uh, when you have a long kick jump you often find that uh, you are so on the lowest setting here and it still doesn't sound right uh, just because the actual kick jump is too long the kick drum feeding into the compressor but with a short click like this you can control really easily whether you want the sidechain uh, effect to be so quite laid back like this or a bit more urgent with a shorter release setting here on the compressor and uh, in my case here I thought 100 around 100 milliseconds creates a nice offbeat rhythm between each kick drum. So let's get back in the track a bit and look at the synth stabs that are going on in the track. Get them here on a groove. 
cycle over this section here. So we have one layer here coming from a nexus actually. But the second layer is actually a snare. So you can try that if you want to create a really punchy uh, stab sound like this. Instead of layering like three or four synths on top of each other, try adding a, a clap or a snare. That's something I did on my remix of Cassandra Fox Touch Me, for example, too. There's a snare layer on that big stabby saw wave riff to give that more attack. But there's one more really cool production technique that I was going to show you, which is also happening on that synth stab sound. Let's skip forward in the track a bit. Solo there, actually. And the effect that I'm talking about is that pumping reverb they hear coming out in between each stab. Almost sounds like a reverse reverb, but it's not. And that's an effect that you hear in quite a lot of tracks these days. I first used it in my track uh, Vision with Seven Skies on in Juni Beats. And I'll show you how you can set this up. So here we have the stab group. And this is the reverb that's on it. Let's bypass the compressors for now. And like this is just a box standard reverb here coming from the Ableton reverb effect. And the way you set up this pumping reverb effect is basically a different way of using sidechain compression. So you insert a compressor after the reverb on the effects return. And this time as the sidechain trigger, you don't use the kick drum or the trigger that we were talking about a minute ago, but you use the actual stab itself as the input. And like this, the stab itself is ducking the reverb that's on it. And then you have to set the correct release time to get that pumping rhythm. About sort of 250 milliseconds, I'd say, in this example. And then the severity of it is controlled here with the threshold. Sometimes if you find that just one compressor alone isn't good enough, you can just basically make a copy and insert another compressor afterwards. And that way you get a more extreme effect. And you can try this technique on riffs basically that have a big enough gap in between the notes, like in the example here of Cosmonaut, that allow the reverb to come back in between each step. So that's how that is done. More to come in part three. <laughs> 